Good morning, everybody. Ivan here. Hope you are well. Happy to have you here. It is 9 o'clock. It is Monday morning. It is class time. We're firing up the laptop. We're getting ready to go. We've got an exciting week for you this week. As always, we've got five classes, one class a day, every single day, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central Time, Facebook.com slash Ivan Zoop, but you know all that because you're here. I guess that announcement was for everybody who's not here, but they didn't hear it. So let's get into things. Let's fire up the laptop. We're going to cover our topic of the day. We're going to start off, of course, with $100,000 hair cutter. We got a lot of good going on. Hope your week is well. Congratulations if you are in New Jersey. I believe New Jersey salons open today. Barbershops and hair salons are back in action, I believe, starting today. Uh, hopefully you guys have been watching carefully while the rest of the world got opened up uh, just before that. So you've taken some notes and you're ready to go. Clients are hairy and ready for haircuts and the world is doing okay. I hope yours is. I keep trying to help mine be doing okay. I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Let's get into it. Um, I want to start out today with $100,000 hair cutter. $100,000 hair cutter, guys. We're going to be digging deep on it coming up real soon. I've got some new exciting stuff launching. I'm excited to be bringing, excited to be bringing deeper levels of exploration of how you can do this. You know, if you're 2020, Got off to a rocky start. And let's be honest, if you cut hair here on planet Earth, your 2020 got off to a rocky start. But it's not too late to salvage 2020. It's not too late to have a $100,000 hair cutter year. There's a lot of work to be done. And if you're up for doing it, if you're interested in having me help you do it, we can do it together. We can get you here or more. $100,000 hair cutter is an everyday deal. Keep the book on your night table. Wake up every morning. Turn to today and read today, today. So we start every class. It's become a real tradition with us reading today. It is June 15. That is day 196 of the year with 169 days remaining in the year. So... No, I'm sorry, that's July 15. We're June 15. The, the numbers didn't add up on that. That didn't make sense to me at all because we're not at the halfway point yet. Pardon. All right, June 16, day 167 with 198 days remaining. That sounds a little more like it, doesn't it? All right. Um, it's become a tradition, like I said, that we start every educational presentation and program and conversation with a reading from the book. Kind of a way of grounding us, kind of a way of launching our educational experience. Let's take a look. What do we have today? June 16. Run a max temperature promotion. A little bit of gambling here. A little bit of marketing here. A little bit of business here. A little bit of fun. A little bit of profitability. Run a max temperature promotion. What do we mean by that? The heat of summer is approaching. It's supposed to be 90 on Thursday here in Chicago. Play games with the temperature for some hot fun and business building. If you live in the Sun Belt, there are many promotional ideas you can build around the prospect of record setting temperatures. If you live way up north, you can still get summer heat, but if needed, you can pick a sister city to work with anywhere in the hottest parts of the planet to set your games around. Take bets on the temperature for a specific date for a free haircut. Offer free haircuts on a particular date if the temperature hits a target temperature in your area. Those are just some examples. There's so many ways to play. And this ex idea, playing max temperature games, is just an example of making something out of nothing. This is, you know, we all have temperature. Every day there's a temperature, high, low, or otherwise. And everybody talks about the weather. Nice day we're having. Yeah, not such a nice day we're having. It was a beautiful weekend. Hope next weekend's beautiful. We can't get away from talking about the weather. You know, it is believed, it is said that weather is the great equalizer. No matter who you are, weather affects you. 
It affects everyone differently. People who have air conditioning are impacted differently by the weather from people who don't. Uh, absolute, but everyone's affected by it. You can be a millionaire and you can be a street person and temperature affects you very differently, obviously, in those two examples, but people talk about the weather. It's a great equalizer and a great commonizer. But my question to you or my challenge to you really is how can you use the weather as a powerful promotional tool for your business? I love the max temperature game stuff, you know, picking a date and taking bets on high temp for the day. Um, all kinds of fun can be had. I'm curious to know what you do with it. If you do something with this idea, please reach out to me. Let me know about it. Share it so I can share it with the greater $100,000 haircutter community so we can talk about how this works and what this is all about. I do want to acknowledge a sponsor today, but I'm not going to mention them just yet because my sponsor ties in very specifically and very appropriately to the topic of the day. So while we're checking in here, we'll take a look real quick on comments. Anybody logging in, checking in, saying hello? How do you handle Barbara who's been working in the shop for 30 years and doesn't want to change the new prices? Christian is asking a question here in our class about price increases. And as everyone well knows, um, June is the ramp up to July 1 Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. Christian, I don't want to answer your question directly here within this forum at this time. Um, I will message you personally, privately, to have a little bit of that conversation. But um, please know I'm posting videos on Raise Your Haircut Prices Day every single morning the entire month on my uh, Instagram, on my IG Live, and over to my IG TV. It's a conversation we're pretty deep in right now, uh, and I'm happy to help you with specifics on challenges associated with uh, haircut price increases uh, in any aspect of building and growing your business. So, Christian, got your thumb. Happy to help you. Uh, we will get into it. David, good morning. I see you checking in. Brandon is checking in here online on Facebook. Uh, so we got people showing up and getting into it for the day's program. Happy to have you. So let's talk about it. Today's topic, and, and this is new, guys. This is something that will be new on Mondays. I want to make sure you guys know about this because you may want to make a point specifically and specially to tune in on Mondays. Um, those of you that follow me on my Patreon page, and I'll put a link in this comment stream later for Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Ivan Zoot. Matter of fact, I'll put it up right now. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to go there, patreon.com slash Ivan Zoot. That is my online community page, and I provide a ton of ongoing support there every single day, five days a week. I'm checking in on it on the weekends uh, to help people build and grow their business, to help people become $100,000 haircutters. I encourage you, I welcome you, I invite you, and I ask you to join my tribe over there. Um, the folks that follow and are members of that tribe, these are the people to whom I am devoting the largest majority of my attention, the largest majority of my focus and my support. And if my support is valuable and important to you, being there will get you uh, the most of it uh, all the time. So uh, I have what I call the topic of the week. The topic of the week is a topic for the week that we talk about and we address and we focus on within my community. And we do it a few ways. Tuesday, I post a blog post on my blog at ivanzoot.com about the topic of the week. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Time, I have my weekly team meeting where one of the elements of that meeting, and it's a free online meeting, is the topic of the week. Thursday is when I release my YouTube video on the topic of the week. It's a video related to the topic of the, of the week. And Friday is the audio post. Just a few moments ago, before I jumped on this class, I recorded the audio post for this week for Friday for the topic of the week. So there's a different subject every week. That is how topic of the week works. And what I'm adding now to my weekly calendar is Monday will be the class on the topic of the week. 
So today we're going to talk about the topic of the week, which is top 10 targeting. So if you followed that calendar, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday is the live class, Tuesday is the blog post, Wednesday is the team meeting, Thursday is the video, and Friday is the audio blog. So no matter how you like your content, what format works for you, and no matter where you wish to consume it, on your headphones on the go, that'd be the Friday audio post. On your phone, on YouTube, that would be the Thursday. Here on Facebook, well, that's now Monday. You like to read blog posts? That's going to be Tuesday. So we're going to dig deep every week on the topic of the week. This week's topic is top 10 targeting. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Here we go. Do you know the names, the exact names of your top 10 best customers? You should. You need to. I suggest that you use what resources are available to you to dig into your records and information and identify on a piece of paper in the form of a list your top 10 best customers. This group of individuals is extremely important for your success. Want to be a $100,000 hair cutter? You need to know. You must know your top 10. Now, many people know that I have a working relationship with Booksy that I use Booksy as my online appointment booking software program. Booksy is our sponsor of the day. Booksy is one of my business partners. If you're not already using Booksy, I will post in a link on the site here on this video, a link to download Booksy for free. I invite you to download it for free. Even if you're never going to use Booksy, download the Booksy link for free and click through the app. Learn how it works. Learn what it looks like. Learn, build out your own page. If you don't use it, it'll just go away. Uh, but if you do use it, I think you'll find it is the absolute best choice for online appointment booking and client management information. And it's all about information. Download the Booksy. If you use my code when you download Booksy, you get Booksy for free for a month. That'll let you, normally there's like a free week, 10 day period, whatever, to get you jump started on the platform, but we're going to get you Booksy for a month with lots of support and everything you need to know to get up and running with it. But if you go into the back end of Booksy, and a lot of people think that Booksy is appointment booking, and any of these platforms are so much more. Most importantly, they are back-end data. They are information. And information is powerful when it comes to making decisions about your business. This is why this is so very important. i got to pause for a second because I want to plug in my laptop to the power cord just in case we don't have enough battery to get us through there. I saw the light fade on it, which tells me that it's running on battery backup, but we want to be on the wall. Um... The back end of your books, you go into your analytics, you go into your data. It'll tell you top 10 customers. Dave and Mike and Joe and Billy and Jimmy and Sam and Ralph, their names are right there in a row. These are your top 10. You need to know your top 10. And most of the time, the systems will tell you those top 10 just based on revenue. These are the 10 people that spent the most money with you over the last X period of time. Now, if you don't use a booking app like Booksy, you may accumulate this data manually. You may go into other records that you have to calculate who makes up your top 10 best customers. But the bottom line is, these are the individuals. What you should be looking for are the individuals who, number one, spend the most money with you, who give you the most money of all your customers. Number two, it might be who are your most frequent visitors? Who have you seen the most? Now, depending on service pricing and service mix, just because you see somebody the most doesn't necessarily mean they'd be top 10 revenue. But that group should be pretty compact. Perhaps most product purchases. Who are your top 10? You might even want to split out versions of your top 10. Who are my top 10 most frequent? Who are my top 10 biggest revenue? Who are my top 10 product buyers? And you might want to blend and meld those lists to see within there how common are those top 10. They may be the exact same 10 people. They may be 777 with a little bit of overlap. I don't know. 
But number one, you want to ask the question, who are my top 10 to know who they are? It's a powerful exercise. Number two, once you have this list, now it is time to really start asking questions about these top 10. Take a look at this list of top 10 and ask yourself, what are these 10 individuals besides being Ivan's top 10 or your top 10, what do these 10 have in common? What can we take away and learn from analyzing this group of 10 individuals? Where do they live? Where do they live? The name of the town, the name of the community, how far away are they from you? How far are they traveling to come see you? Are they located in a little demographic cluster? Where do they work? Where do they work? And what kind of work do they do? Are these folks uh, office executive types? Are these folks construction worker uh, contractor types? Are these folks skilled tradespeople types? Um, are these folks unemployed seniors, retired seniors? Retired and unemployed aren't the same thing, I get it, but you know what I mean. Um, what do we, what can we glean from these people? Um, what is their hair type? Are my top 10 customers all very thin and fine hair? Maybe that says something about my skill set. Maybe that says something about the work that I do. Are my top 10 customers all thick, wavy hair? Are my top 10 customers all tight, kinky, curly hair textures? What do I know about their income levels, education levels, various other demographics? Are they all members of the same church community? Things like that. What can we learn about this group? The flip side of that conversation, of course, is how are my top 10 different? Where, do they, where are they at age-wise? Are my top 10 seniors, uh, uh, middle-agers, and young people? Or are my top 10 all post-college young working guys or girls? Are they guys or girls? These are all examples of those questions. The flip side, of course, is the difference. Where, where are these clients different? What can I learn from analyzing and digging deep into this group? You may not have all the answers. So the next phase of this conversation is about getting more answers about this group. Step number one is identify your top 10. Step number two is identify similarities and differences within your top 10. Step number three is learning more about your top 10. How do you learn more about your top 10? It's not that complicated. You ask. Surveys. Do a survey of your top 10. You can use an electronic tool like a Survey Monkey. Free, by the way. Survey Monkey is free to ask little 10 question surveys. There's a paid version of it, obviously. You can upgrade to pay and begin to deepen your penetration in your questions and things like that. But a basic Survey Monkey can be totally free. You know what else you can do? You can pick up the phone. You can simply call these people and say, hey, Ivan here. Bob, you're one of my top 10 best customers. And I wanted to reach out to you today on the telephone. I wanted to give you a call and I wanted to say thank you. You are one of my top 10 best customers. I appreciate your business. I appreciate being given the opportunity to serve you and your hair care needs. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? What are the chances he's going to say no to that? pretty low, I would think. Let's ask some questions. Let's dig in a little bit and see what we can learn about the people that make up this top 10. What are some questions you might want to ask a member of your top 10 group if you had the chance to get them on the phone? I don't think you want to do this in the shop. I don't think you want to list in the shop and the next time your top teners come in, you ask them. I don't think you want to be doing this on the floor. I don't think you want to be taking up appointment time for this. I think you want to reach out on the phone. Throw them a text. Jump on a phone call. Say, hey, give me a minute. Can we talk? 
Most people, if they're your top 10 customers, they're going to talk to you. They're already talking to you multiple times a month. How'd you hear about me? I think that's a great question. You know, let's go back a minute, Bob. You've been a client for a while. Remind me, because you may remember and you may not. And you may think you know, and you may be wrong. So I love the, the question, hey, Bob, remind me. Because remind me implies that you know, but you're asking him to tell his version of the story. Hey, Bob, remind me. How'd you hear about me in the first place? Oh, Jimmy recommended me. Oh, that's right. You're a friend of Jimmy's. Done. Period. End of conversation. Make a note. Call Jimmy. Number one, thank Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, you know your friend Bob? You know, I was looking through my records the other day. Bob's one of my top 10 customers. And I just want to reach out and say thank you and tell you how much I appreciate you sending Bob in the first place. That can't hurt anybody or anything, can it? I don't think so. That's a worthwhile dime you just spent on that phone call. How'd you hear about me in the first place? Another great question. And I think you may be surprised to learn of the answer. Because I think we think we know the answers. And I think when we ask, we're sometimes surprised. Because what we think are the answers are not necessarily what our clients will tell us are the answers. You want a great question to ask one of your top 10 customers? I'll give you a great question. Hey, Bob, why do you keep coming back? Hey, Bob. Why do you keep coming back to me to get your haircut? Now, you may be telling yourself stories like, well, Bob loves his haircuts. Well, I'm really close to Bob's house. Well, I cut Bob's whole family so he comes to me. These may be the reasons and countless other ones why you think he comes back. And he may look you in the eye and tell you, you know, I keep coming back just because I think your place is cool and I like hanging out here. Good to know or any of a million other reasons why Bob keeps coming back. Now I got a note here for another question to ask your customer. And I gotta be honest, this is just Ivan being Ivan. I can't read what I wrote. We'll skip that one, we'll come back. Next question on the list, hey Bob, what am I missing? Hey Bob, what am I missing? That's a really great open-ended, thought-provoking, conversation-starting type of question. Hey, Bob, what am I missing in your haircut experience? Now, the answer could be nothing. I love my haircut. We're good. Fine. Take him at his word. You know, if you want to probe a little deeper, ask a follow-up question. Just say, okay, Bob, thanks. You know, I just wanted to ask that question because as a top 10 customer on that list, I want to keep you on that list. Is there anything I'd need to be doing to keep you on that list? It's the same question. Restate it re-asked, stimulating his thinking. The longer he thinks, you don't know what he's going to come up with. You might end that question with, no problem, Bob. If you're happy, I'm happy. But if at any point you come up with something you think of that maybe I could be doing, should be doing, that would make your haircut experience better, pick up the phone, give me a call, or make a note, and the next time you come in, let's talk about it. This kind of open dialogue, this kind of conversation, you know, guys want to talk about politics and sports and stuff like that. Let's, let's get into some meaningful stuff. Uh, oh, here's my other note was, what day do you like? Now, you may have this data in your information that Bob's a Tuesday. Bob's always a Tuesday. Bob comes in on Tuesday. Or you may not know that. You may notice Bob may be all over the calendar. And you may even ask that question. You know, Bob, a lot of my clients are fairly regular. Wednesday guys come in on Wednesday. But I notice you bounce around the calendar. Tell me about that. Well, maybe Bob's schedule at work changes every week, and maybe Bob just gets in when he can. These are things you don't know until you know. These are pieces of information you don't have until you dig. And this can be very, very powerful once you start looking around. Maybe a class on how to get and make those top 10 clients. David, that's a great suggestion. What we're talking about here is maybe the second 10, not your top 10, but 11 through 20. We talk constantly about building your top 10. And I think that is really a part of 
the 100,000 book. I've done a number of classes over the last several months related to building your business and targeting your 100 new next customers. 100 by 100 is 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guarantee. Um, but David, I think that's a great idea. And even just since I read your suggestion, in my head already, I'm cranking up some ideas. What would you think, David? Give me a thumbs up if you like this one. What would you think of the idea of a class on the top 10 tips for creating top 10 customers? I bet I could build that list. Maybe that would be a great topic of the week for next week because this week is your top 10 list. Next week could be the top 10 things to do to create top 10 customers. David, I like it. It's a great idea. I'm probably going to use that idea. I'm even going to write it down. That's how you know I'm serious when I remember that my brain's just not that good and I got to write it down. All right, David, if we use it, you're going to get credit for it. So number one was identifying your top 10 best customers. Number two was sorting them out and understanding your top 10 customers. Number three was digging a little bit deeper by asking questions to and surveying your top 10 customers. Number four on the list is targeting your next 10. So David, that's where I was going with this. Number four on the list is asking yourself the question, where do I find, how do I find, who are my next 10? Who are going to be the 10 that I add to this list? Now, recognize if you've got a top 10 and you roll up your sleeves and you dig in and you look to find 10 more, that may not be 11 through 20. This new top 10 may slot in between the current 10 and in six months, your new top 10 might be five people from the top 10 list and five new people injected into it. But here's my question to you. In growing business, how can you target people who are similar to your top 10? You have to use what you knew about your top 10 from what you divine from your stats. What kind of hair do they have? What kind of money do they make? Where do they live? How often do they come in? What days do they come in? What products do they buy? What type of hair do they have? All those kinds of things. That's what you know from segment two. And segment three was what can we gather by asking? That's the research that you do digging into these top 10. When you've got all that information, you start to build a bit of a profile of who your best customer is. And I hope you recognize when I say that who your best customer is, I hope you recognize that that's going to be different for everyone. My 10 best customers probably look a little bit different from your 10 best customers or the next guy's 10 best customers. That's the cool thing about the business. There's 328 million people in America. Every one of them could be a top 10 best customer for somebody. But the odds are there's no way that all 328 million Americans can be top 10 customers for me. For everything from where I live to the work I do to the prices I charge to the type of skills that I have. So the question becomes, knowing what we know of our top 10, with all the information we gathered about our top 10, where do we find the next 10? What aspects of those top 10s do we target in our advertising, our promotion, and our marketing activities to build us 10 more just like those? Now, in step four here, targeting people like your top 10, there's a flip side to this. And that is the idea of targeting people that might be totally different. There's an idea for you. If you find that your top 10 is a very sort of focused group, very narrow in terms of who they are, you may agree, and I tend to agree, that niche marketing or niche focusing on that which makes up this top 10 is a really good plan. 
You know, as an example, if I am good with upper middle aged business type guys with thin and fine hair, that's getting pretty specific. Upper middle aged business type guys, thin and fine hair who live on the western side of Interstate 294 north of Lake Cook Road. Now that may not make sense to you if you don't know where I live, but where I live in the Chicago metropolitan area, that's a pretty specific area. But that area contains thousands and thousands of people that meet that description. So as narrow as that description is, boom, it's a huge target. I can focus similar and never target anybody other than the people that meet the very narrow description of my top 10 target market. The flip side of that conversation is, I could also say, hey, if I primarily work well with my top 10 is upper middle aged business people with thin and fine hair, what if I went after high school guys? What if I targeted high school guys with uh, tight fades? I just want high school guys with tight fade haircuts. Well, you go to a high school, there's a high school kitty corner from the shop where I work. And that high school has a pretty substantial Latino population. And a lot of these Latino kids right now, styles and trends, are wearing short tight faded haircuts. I pretty much can tell you, except for the fact that those guys can't come in during school hours, if I cut nothing but high school aged Latino guys with short tight faded haircuts, I could be one crazy busy barber. They come in a lot, they get cut frequently, they like their tight fades, and there's no shortage of these guys. The high school is filled with them. Could I build that, for instance, if I find that my top 10 are those middle-aged business guys with fine hair, and I'm cutting them during the business day, but those middle-aged business guys with fine hair just don't come in after four o'clock because they're going home to their families or they're doing other stuff, but the school, you know, high school gets out at three o'clock after school activities are over at 4.15, and these kids are walking past my shop in groups of six, eight, and 12, and by the way, that is exactly what happens in my neighborhood. How hard would it be to target that group? How would I target them? I'd print up some type of card and I'd go outside at 415, standing in front of the shop. And when these kids come walking by to go to the convenience store to grab a pop or go to the sandwich place next door, walk up. Hey, guys, tight fades. Come see me. I'm Ivan. I'm Clipper Guy. Want to hook you up. Boom. I could have, and you know how these guys work. One guy goes, they all follow. And they're very different from that middle-aged business guy, fine hair traffic clientele that was formerly my top 10. I would argue in that example, with the frequency with which some of those tight fades get cut and how short those haircuts are, I would think I could turn over most of my top 10 in six months with that target initiative. And I wouldn't lose those other guys. Those fine haired middle-aged business guys would still be my customers, still be coming in, still be getting cut like crazy. But I would build a whole other level on top of it. So this is the topic of the week. It's about targeting your top 10. It's about identifying your top 10, step one. It's about understanding your top 10, step two. It's about targeting your top 10, step three. And then it's about, or surveying your top 10, step three, and step four, targeting your next 10 customers. This is what top 10 targeting is all about. I hope you found this program interesting. I hope it can be valuable to you. I look forward to hearing from you if I can help you with this. We're going to springboard off this, and we're going to talk about making top 10 customers. I think we already started in our program next week. It'll be the topic of the week. I'll write the blog post, I'll do the audio post, I'll create a video, we'll have a meeting, and I will do the class on Monday next week, because that's what we do in my $100,000 haircutter community. Jump on the Patreon, download Booksy to get a look at the app, reach out to me with questions and conversations throughout the week. I hope you have a great week. I hope you'll see me here tomorrow on Tuesday, 
We'll be here every single day. Tomorrow is classic tapered men's haircut. We're gonna take a look at the reverse blend technique on the classic tapered men's haircut. We've dug into this haircut before. We're gonna dig into this haircut again because it's the foundation of the game we play in this business. Classic tapered men's haircuts is what classic barbering has always been all about and will probably continue to be for some time to come. Thanks for watching today. I hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Be safe, have fun, cut hair, make money, and let me help you along the way with this exciting journey. Ivanzoot.com for lots more information and join me on the Patreon page. Have a great day.